The theme for this year's monster movie reviews has been creature features. It has been such an awesome theme to explore. I have so enjoyed talking about these films for you guys. And the final example of a creature feature that I'm going to talk about is called Tarantula. Tarantula was released December 14th, 1955. It was directed by Jack Arnold, who also directed It Came From Outer Space and Creature From the Black Lagoon. It was produced by William Allen, who also produced It Came From Outer Space and Creature From the Black Lagoon. It was written by Robert M. Fresco and Martin Berkeley. Martin Berkeley also wrote Revenge of the Creature, the sequel to Creature From the Black Lagoon. It stars... John Agar, who also stars in Revenge of the Creature. He was also a veteran actor who appeared in westerns and war movies and B-movies throughout the 40s and 50s and 60s. Uh, he also starred in Revenge of the Creature, among many other credits. Also in the cast, Leo G. Carroll, who appeared probably most notably in six Alfred Hitchcock films, including Rebecca, Spellbound, and North by Northwest, and he also starred on TV in the 60s in The Man from UNCLE. It also stars Mara Corday, who appeared mostly in B-movies, including The Black Scorpion, and then later in her career, she had small roles in several Clint Eastwood movies, including Sudden Impact and Pink Cadillac. Also in the cast, Nestor Paiva, who is a prolific actor, appeared in hundreds of films, including Creature from the Black Lagoon, where he was uh, Lucas, the boat captain, and Revenge of the Creature, and he also starred in Mighty Joe Young. And, in a really awesome little bit of film trivia, this movie also features, I wouldn't say stars, because it's really just a blink-and-you'll-miss-him cameo, but in this movie is a very young, yet unknown, Clint Eastwood. He is one of the fighter pilots. He's the lead fighter pilot in the climactic sequence uh, to finally destroy the tarantula. Uh, that's Clint Eastwood in that flight mask and helmet. That's, that's such a cool little bit of trivia, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. Tarantula, like, uh, like Them, is one of those movies that I think automatically pops into people's minds when you say creature feature because... Uh, creature features in the minds of many people are the giant bug movies, are the movies about these giant irradiated mutant insects that attack towns, and there are so many elements of Tarantula that fit the, 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 the standard tropes of the creature feature. It is about a giant bug, in this case, a spider, a tarantula that gets as big as a fucking house. It gets gigantic. It takes place in the American Southwest, just like it came from outer space, just like them. Um, and it features these conflicts between man's knowledge and man's desire to attain knowledge. It's once again man's reach exceeding his grasp. It's once again man's hubris coming back to bite him in the ass. But in this movie, it's a little bit different than some of the other ones because the scientific project that results in the creation of this gigantic monster that threatens this southwestern American town, it's not a military project, it's not an atomic bomb-related project, it's actually a very well-intentioned attempt by scientists to increase the world's food supply by growing much bigger animals. It's a, it's a noble cause. It's a noble project that goes awry. And I think there's a theme there in the idea that even our best intentions can result in very negative consequences if they are pursued recklessly. And that idea of unintended consequences comes across much stronger in this movie than, say, the idea of atomic paranoia, which is a very common theme in creature features of the 50s. There is a little bit of atomic stuff. One of the scientists who is creating the giant animals talks about how he's able to do this by harnessing the power of the atom. So there's they, they stick the atomic stuff in there a little bit, but it's not a major, major part uh, of the film. And again, we see that the threat of the giant creature is only just barely defeated after the scientists are finally forced to call on the, the aid of the military. There, if, if there's, if there's a, a, a somewhat disturbing theme that you can find in several of the creature features, at least from, from my perspective, uh, that would be the, uh, the establishment of the supremacy of the military. 
because the military is always treated in these films as not only the the last resort but the 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 unstoppable force once you call in the military the military are are the are the ultimate good guys and they're the ones that will come in and clean up the mess that the scientists made and depending on your point of view you might find that to be a somewhat troubling theme uh, but that is present in some of the other creature features I've reviewed. It's certainly present in them and is definitely present in Tarantula as well. Not only does the southwestern setting establish this as a quintessential creature feature, it also allows Jack Arnold to put to film some absolutely gorgeous cinematography. The scenery in this movie is amazing. It takes better advantage, I think, of its setting in the southwestern United States than any of the other films that I have spoken about that are also set in that region. The the photography, the exter the exteriors setting in in the desert or shots of the the outcroppings of rocks are just just beautiful. Just really gorgeous black and white photography capturing the American uh, Southwest. And also the special effects. You don't usually think of creature features as having great special effects. We usually think of them as having really corny special effects. In my review for them, I sort of mentioned how I really like the special effects of the, like the giant ants, the puppet cre creations. I think they hold up pretty well, but they're also goofy looking enough that you can make fun of them and, and have a good time sort of mocking them. Uh, in Tarantula, they go a different direction. In Tarantula, they don't use puppets for the most part. They don't use miniatures. They use real footage, real film of tarantulas walking around, crawling over stuff, doing things, and then they are, they are enlarged to gigantic proportions and superimposed behind the, the human actors or the, the human scale action using matting. And it's really effective. It is actually, you would, if it's done wrong, if it's not done perfectly, then crude matting effects can look really terrible and really fake. But in Tarantula, for the most part, they get the proportions right, they get the focus right, they get the combination of the various elements just perfect so that it really does look like a gigantic tarantula crawling around over people's houses or over people's cars. And then they do use miniatures and puppet elements for close-ups or for point-of-view shots where you can see the, the legs or the fangs sort of coming out from behind the camera from the edges of the frame. Um, but for the most part, it's real tarantulas filmed and just blown up to humongous size using uh, movie magic, and it, it actually works really well. The acting in the movie is good, but it's not super impressive. Uh, John Agar is good, but he's his usual self. He usually plays uh, these very genial but bland protagonists. There's nothing bad about his performance at all, but there's you're, you're not going to walk out of the theater going, oh boy, that John Agar, what an actor. It's, it's just not going to happen. Uh, Corday does very good with a pretty limited role that she's given. It seems like she might be a pretty good actress, but she's just not asked to do much other than be the, the typical female lead. For me, the real star of Tarantula and the star of this series of creature features overall has been uh, the director, Jack Arnold. He directed It Came From Outer Space, he directed Creature From the Black Lagoon, and he directed this film. And I really think he deserves recognition as the James Whale or the Terrence Fisher of 1950s sci-fi horror movies. This is a genre that is sort of looked down upon by film critics from time to time. It's not generally thought of as a place to find really high quality filmmaking. But even though the material itself is low and very populist and, and very silly and very goofy and at times very cheesy and corny, I think if you look at the three movies by Jack Arnold that I reviewed in this series, you will find filmmaking both technically and artistically of a very high caliber. This was a guy who knew how to shoot a movie, who knew how to tell a story, who knew what to do with this kind of material. You may think, well, this is just a goofy, silly monster movie. This isn't like serious drama. It ain't exactly Shakespeare. That's absolutely true. But in the hands of a director who knows what it is and knows what to do with it, it can be something special. And Jack Arnold, I think, was one of those filmmakers. I think he knew how to approach this material to make it work, to make it into something that would be memorable and that would stand the test of time. And I would argue that his work has stood the test of time, at least among people who are interested and appreciative of this genre of films. It came from outer space, Creature from the Black Lagoon, and to a lesser extent, but I would still argue it's right up there, Tarantula, uh, are all very well remembered 
and, and usually mentioned as some of the best examples of this kind of a movie. And I think Jack Arnold deserves a lot of credit for that. I think you need to credit William Allen as well, because I think obviously as a producer, he knew exactly what Jack Arnold needed for these projects. He knew exactly uh, how to go about making this kind of a movie. And in the right hands, even the silliest, most ridiculous premise, giant tarantula destroys small town can be made into something very memorable and that is very, very skillfully done. There's nobody involved in this movie, even though it's a silly monster movie, nobody involved in this movie has anything to be ashamed about. This is a very well-made, well-executed film um, and one of the best of the creature features. I would put it just a notch below the level of Creature from the Black Lagoon and them in terms of artistic and technical accomplishment and uh, one of the best examples of creature features. Now this has been such a fun, fun theme to talk about this year. I love talking about these movies. I love watching these movies. They are so much fun. They're great to watch just as pure popcorn entertainment and they're wonderful fun to look at critically and to analyze them and to uh, read read them for, for themes and for messages. And it's just a really, really rewarding experience to go over these movies again as a, as a viewer and as a critic. So I've really enjoyed this. If you are looking for other examples of creature features, uh, there is a long list of movies that you should check out. Uh, two in particular that I did not review this time, but that I very easily could have are the original, uh, The Thing from Another World, and also The Blob, which is a super, super fun movie. You might also want to check out a creature feature produced by Hammer Films, uh, the same production company that gained great fame as a reimaginer of classic universal monsters like Dracula and the Mummy and Frankenstein. Uh, Hammer did a really terrific creature feature in 1956 called X the Unknown. Maybe you could check that out as well. That's another great example. You can see how the subject was approached from outside of Hollywood. It's a really, really interesting and fun movie as well. So those are my reviews of the creature features. I really hope you guys enjoyed hearing me blab about them as much as I enjoyed watching them and, and uh, talking about them. And I will see you back here next Halloween week for some more monster movie reviews. Thank you so much for watching. Hey folks, once again, I want to thank you guys for watching not just this video, but all of the videos in this week's Monster Movie Review series. If you haven't seen them all, check out the playlist to see all five reviews. Uh, if you enjoyed this review or the other ones, please like this video, share this video, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and please also, if you enjoy my work, consider helping me to make more videos like this by supporting this channel through Patreon. You can make a small monthly donation. It'll really help me out and really help me to make more videos like this in the future. You can go to www.patreon.com slash Steve Shives to find out more. Thanks again for watching.